Welcome everyone to the I2B2 Transmart Foundation's community meeting for July 2020. Thanks all for joining uh, this midsummer uh, session. Today's agenda uh, can be seen here and uh, we will be recording this meeting and the uh, recording and the slide decks will be available within a day or two. Um, with that, I think I'll turn it over to Diane. Hi everyone. Um, I hope I hope everybody is doing okay. Um, I can't believe it's July. Um, it seems like this year is kind of a I don't know. It's either the longest year of my life or the shortest year of my life. I can't figure it out, but um, it is July, and I hope everybody is doing okay with um, the current um, state of affairs. Um, so I'm going to jump in and um, give you uh, an overview of what we're going to be talking about today. Um, we'll do a very quick review on the Harvard meeting um, and let you know like how many people actually showed up. Um, we're in the process now of gearing up for a uh, European meeting in the fall in November. And um, we want to start promoting that and, and putting an agenda together. So we'll, we'll tell you what's up with that. Um, Rudy will jump in and give you a preview of our, our new foundation website. We finally have a, a new design and we're ready to launch that. And then we have our, our, um, uh, our featured speakers, Mike Mendez will, from the ETL group, will talk about the Cynthia um, synthetic data set that he's put together, um, focusing on COVID patients. And then Jeff Klan will talk about uh, I2B2, um, what's coming up in, in, in 13 and also um, you know what? Uh, we 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 will solicit uh, requests um, and, and for our wish list. So next slide, Rudy. So this is just a smiling faces of our board of directors. Um, I think uh, we've we've introduced all of these um, folks to you in the past, but I just like to um, I'm very proud of this group. Um, very diverse group from uh, Harvard, other universities in the. Um, the U.S., um, Europe, and, and certainly in our industry um, uh, members. So you can go to the next slide, Rudy. The Harvard meeting. Um, I think I, I I hope I'm not sure if all of you joined that meeting. I think that this was this meeting was a success. We weren't really sure how the virtual um, conference was going to go, but I think people are used to virtual conferences um, now. You know, we focused a lot on COVID projects, obviously, because that's the that's what uh, most people that are using it to be true are focusing on these days. We talked a lot about our platforms and um, what we're doing with our with our software platforms um, and the roadmaps that we've put together. I think people were were pleased with that. Um, and also, we had a major session around ACT. It's a lot of work around ACT. Um, certainly focused on COVID again and then um, reports from our working groups. So I think, I think pretty much a success. And Rudy, you can go to the next slide. To, um, so we had 371 people that actually registered. That's about three times as many as we normally do for the Harvard meeting, which is pretty exciting. Um, obviously, in, with, with virtual meetings, then you don't have to pay. There's a lot of people that won't attend. But we had really good attendance. The, the first day, there was. Um, you know, 150 people that started out. So you can see the, the chart here. So the first uh, day there were, um, you know, a lot of people that stayed on this. The other thing I noticed throughout this meeting was people really used the chat to be able to um, comment about what was going on and, and sort of chat with each other, which is something that you don't do in an in-person meeting. So that part I think was really good. And the second day was pretty impressive as well. We had a steady, um, you know, 93 across the whole day, um, which is really a, a, an attribute to the, the working groups as well as the ACT session. The ACT session was, was very um, well attended and, um, and, a, and a lot of good comments. So you can go to the next slide, Rudy. We have all of the slides and the um, recordings up on the website. So if you missed anything or you wanna go back and um, uh, preview, re-review re something, um, all of those, um, those are available on the website. Next slide. So now that we got that behind us, we're gonna gear up for the European um, meeting. And I'll give you a little bit of a preview on that. Um, this again will be virtual, um, although I would love to go to Europe. <laughs> they won't let me in. <laughs> um, it's gonna be one day. We decided, uh, the working group, the European working group decided to just really focus on one day. So it'll be on uh, November 9th. 
um, and they are in the process of recruiting for speakers. Um, and we'll, you know, for the most part, it's going to be run by, we'll do the logistical um, work, but it, the European group is really putting the agenda together. Um, and next slide, Rudy, is the um, sort of the, the outline of the slide so far. You know, they want updates on the foundation. They want to know more about um, 4C. 4C. Um, they want a, a couple of sponsors to talk about their services and how they can um, support um, organizations that are uh, implementing our, our um, software platforms. Um, and, they, the, and then the other things, they, they want to focus on use cases. And these are going to be use cases primarily around Transmart. The, the European community uses Transmart quite a bit. Um, I'm sure we'll, we'll talk about I2B2, but Transmart is going to be heavily um, focused, uh, the focus of this meeting. Um, they want a sort of best practices um, session. This may actually be different breakout sessions. Um, you know, they're interested in how people are focusing on data quality and, and you know, things like that. And then very, very much they want to understand our roadmaps. Um, so that's the European meeting and I will, um, next slide, I think Rudy, you will take us through the foundation website. Okay, thank you. Uh, hope you can hear me. So uh, we've been working uh, on a, uh, a new website, um, working with the, uh, the same group who built the original website, Scott Quantum Think, uh, and uh, they've come up with uh, what I think is a very nice um, presentation for us. Uh, it's, it's new and refreshed uh, and uh, trying to get uh, um, not only a very nice look and feel, but make things easier to get to. Uh, this is the front page uh, where you can see we're highlighting uh, our two software uh, packages, I2B2 and Transmart, and some quick links so that you can get over uh, to them. Um, and as you scroll down, uh, there's a lot of information on um, that, that foundation. Uh, we've got uh, new pages for, um, uh, yeah, as you scroll down, you see you know more information as you go through. And then, of course, the um, you know, the, the software pages are, are there with a lot of links. Um, I, uh, the, uh, the, the site will be using this new address, so it'll be uh, www.i2b2transmart.org uh, will be the address. Right now, that just goes to the uh, Transmart, you know, original website uh, that we've been using, but uh, this will cut over probably later this week. Uh, and um, we're real excited. We think it's looking great. We're going to be working on, um, refreshing a lot of the, the content that's in there, uh, adding new things, but um, everything that's in there now has been you know, redone. And I think it really offers a, a much cleaner uh, and easier to use interface for us as we move ahead. So that's all I wanna say. Um, you look for it uh, later in the week, hopefully, if everything go well, and um, uh, it'll be there for us to, to start to really, um, you know, make sure that we capture, you know, the activities and the, um, you know, the information that you all need uh, as you work with the foundation and work with our platforms. I think that's all I need to say. Now, Mike Mendez, I think you're, are you ready to? Um, uh, yep, yeah. can you hear me? Yes. Awesome, technology. It's great when it works. Yeah, I know, exactly. Okay, yeah. okay you wanna switch to the first screen? Yeah. Okay, so, so for the June ETL meeting, what we had uh, decided to do quickly was basically create a patient set similar to like the 133 patient set that contained COVID-19 synthetic data. And so we started looking around and we uh, decided to use a Cynthia data set. And basically Cynthia data set is, was developed by MITRE and it allows you to create synthetic or fake patient data. You can pay, make a um, hundred patients, a thousand patients, a million patients. Uh, Cynthia released a data set already created. There's like an R script that you can create your own. We just decided to use it, theirs. And theirs had, I believe, two million patients in it with a bunch of demographics, a bunch of diagnosis, procedures, labs, and medications. So we used that patient set and then we found another COVID-19 patient set. And then we merged those two together and we're gonna be releasing that in 13. Uh, but we demoed that in the June meeting. 
and so once we had those two data sets, then we use the ACT ontology. Um, can you flip to the next screen? Uh, Rudy? Or can I? Oh. Uh, so, yeah, so this contains a link to where we actually got the COVID 19 data set. And it contained uh, LOINC, NDC, and SNOMED. And so, as we know from the ACT ontology, it does have NDC, it has LOINC, but it doesn't have SNOMED, it has ICD 10. So, what we quickly did was we basically converted the uh, handful of records, um, thanks to Kavi, um, of the SNOMED codes into, uh, the, into the ACT ontology. And so, uh, can you jump to the next screen? So this kind of gives you a rundown of all the diff various different SNOMED codes that we had to deal with. And so, like on the left hand side, you have like all the procedures, and we have the conditions, the care plans, and then the devices. And so we basically kind of um, dealt, because of the limited time, we dealt with just devices and getting those mapped. And so as you see, the first one, which is, begins with 706, all we did was map that to a corresponding ICD-10 code. And then when you did the query, you actually had uh, patients coming up. Uh, can you jump to the next screen? So this is the, the as we're familiar with, the ACT ontology. Um, the very top one is the COVID-19. And so as you see, there's like counts of illnesses, uh, diagnosis. And so uh, we're actively working on getting this whole thing um, implemented into 13 so that not only will we have the 133 patient set, but we'll also have a larger patient set that also is based on the ACT ontology versus the one that currently, which is based on, I guess, the Harvard demo ontology. Um, so we'll make it easier for institutions starting up to basically just start using the ACT ontology. They understand how it's working, then they can just map their data into it and then get them running a lot quicker. Um, the intent is not for people to actually use this Cynthia data because it's just fake data, yeah. but the act, the, the thought is how can we make it easier for people to move their data into a working ontology? And so I think that was the last slide. Yeah, demo, there really isn't a demo. Um, but yeah, so that was kind of the idea. Um, I think that was basically kind of what I wanted to talk about, Rudy. And so, Okay, thanks, Mike. All right. Um, great. Jeff, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Jeff, okay. I'm here. Over so, to you. So over to me. So I'm going to talk a little bit about, this is called, here it's called ITBT 1.7.13 wish list, but I'm going to go over a little bit about what's been happening recently and where we're planning to go with ITB2. And there's some interest in, um, Oh, I didn't get rid of Harvard Symposium. These are not exactly the same slides, but if you attended the Harvard Symposium, um, you will know a lot of these things. I'm gonna go over them much more quickly than I did in the Harvard Symposium. Um, so we, we, we being mostly Mike and I right now, um, <clears throat> but the team at Harvard is maintaining the core I2B2 software and trying to constantly improve it and make it more useful uh, as a wide platform. So uh, focus, a lot of focus has been on improving the documentation and web presence, and we're also adding new features. So I'm just going to run through quickly what we've done in that over the past year or so, and um, then we'll move on to 13. So next slide. Uh, so a, a year ago, we completely revamped the I2B2 community wiki. And so it's now the home for all things I2B2, all the documentation, all of the, uh, it used to just be the community projects, but now it's all the documentation, all the software as well. So it's, it's a really, uh, a really nice, a nice wiki. Um, not as agile and fun as the new Transmart Foundation website, but, uh, but it's very functional. Okay, next slide. Um, and then this year we um, created new web client documentation. So as most of you know, the web client has been around and evolving for 
about a decade, but um, the documentation had gotten really outdated. So we completely rewrote the documentation with some screencasts and overviews and task oriented teaching. And it's hopefully a lot clearer now. And that is, as you can see that the link, the slightly distorted link there uh, on the wiki, but it's also inside the web client. If you just download it, the help button will get you there. Okay, next slide. Um, and what we're working on now for documentation is the common data model um, <clears throat> documentation. So this is the data model that I2B2 will use going forward, which is very, very similar to what it's using right now and that Transmart will use going forward. And this is uh, f funded by the Dell project that we've been working on. So we're gonna have some nice, nice documentation on these core tables and um, how, how it all fits together and how it all works. So hopefully that'll provide a little bit more of a kind of, a, again, a task oriented approach to how to use I2B2 than just the technical descriptions that exist right now. Um, okay, next slide. Uh, so core software is our other kind of uh, development um, task. So in January, we released uh, 1.7.12. In May, we released 1.7.12a. And just now, this month, we are um, helping ACT roll that out. Um, so continuing to field um, questions and make minor bug fixes and, and things like that. So, so soon, soon uh, 1.7.12a will be used pretty widely. Um, and then we're, we're gonna work on a release 1.7.13. Our anticipation is to get that out in December or so. Uh, it's going to be a smaller release, 12 and, and then 12a with the bug fixes introduced a lot of new features. 13 will be a smaller, leaner release that'll um, fix problems and make some small but important changes that'll go into. Uh, but then, you know, there's, there's the future beyond this year, right? So that's, we have to think about what's gonna be coming in 14, 15, 16. So we can, we can chat a little bit about that if people are interested today. And, and I have a internal running list of things that we are interested in working on on the I2B2 core platform um, that most of which we don't have the, the funding to create right now, but with, with the help of the community, we could certainly get those things out. Okay, so next slide. Let's go over 12 real quick. Um, again, people who have been following community meetings or I2B2 uh, Harvard Symposium know uh, these things. So I'll go over them very fast, but we've much improved the install process. There are several ways of installing I2B2 now that are much, much easier than it used to be to install. It no longer takes a week. It takes like an hour if you do it the easiest way. Um, there are concept counting scripts, um, which in Mike's Cynthia data, he was showing those. So you, they're actually, we include scripts now that actually count the number of patients with each concept in the ontology. So you can get these nice counts showing how much data is behind everything at every level of granularity in the ontology. And um, and people are people are using those uh, right now. Okay, next slide. Um, we did a lot of work to get a REDCap import. There's a, a live connection that can run now between REDCap and I2B2 that gives you, um, it creates an I2B2 ontology and as forms are submitted on REDCap, it updates the uh, I2B2 repository dynamically. So it's a very nice REDCap not even import, I guess, it's just red cap in connection. Um, very, very powerful. Uh, next slide. And uh, then uh, the feature that I worked on the most was, a, was revamping fine terms, um, which went through several iterations. I'm only showing the final one here. Left was before 12 and right is now. It shows it in a nice hierarchical form with less uh, less clutter and highlights the things that you're looking for and we, uh, <clears throat> we learned a lot from uh, other groups doing this and especially from the LEAF team at University of Washington. Um, next slide. And the other thing that, oh, this is a little bit more. We did some other improvements to the find terms. Uh, you can actually jump back to the navigate terms tree and uh, see, see where exactly your term, your, the term you found is in the, in the total hierarchy. Uh, next slide. Uh, so a major, major thing in 12 um, is that we have contributions from a lot of people. Uh, the contributions are not um, huge, major features, but 
in the past, I2B2 core has only been code from Harvard. And we wanted to really demonstrate that we, we want to open this up. We want people in the community to contribute to the core platform. And, um, and then, you know, that they can be submitted as pull requests um, in our GitHub and Mike and I can review them and put those into our repository. We've, I've been working on policies for um, code submissions and making sure we cross all our, our T's and dot our I's legally with that. So we, we did take a lot of contributions from the community, um, including the ACT ontology, which was a major feature, but is not just developed for I2B2. And then some changes um, from Beth Israel and Pavia in terms of viewing uh, patient counts, um, making them easier to, easier to read in the UI, uh, add new query by value flags. And as I mentioned, we, um, we learned from the design of fine terms hierarchical view in LEAF from University of Washington. Um, so, so we'd like to continue this trend in 13 and 14 going forward of things from the community. So if there are things that you're interested in developing or even co-developing with us, um, let us know. That would be really, really helpful. Uh, and as I know, a lot of people have, have written great things for I2B2 and people contribute their community plugins on the community page. But I know people have made changes to the core platform locally that would be, uh, would be neat to integrate into the uh, widely distributed core platform. Okay, next slide. Oh, and then we also made some changes to the UI in terms of the tabs on the top left panel, and we added new authentication methods, um, NTL and V2 and Okta. Okay, next slide. Um, and then 12A came out in May and fixed some important bugs that were, uh, were we needed to get fixed before it was rolled out widely in ACT. Um, and so this slide, I'm not going to go through all the bugs, but all to say, don't install 12. Make sure you install 12A. But 12A has been so far pretty stable and it's been working well for people. Okay, next slide. So 13. 13 is going to be, as I said, a leaner release. We're making smaller changes, but important ones that are kind of setting direction for the future. So we're making more tab changes in the UI. We're going to add some tabs to the right panel now so you can more easily see features that have been there, like the temporal query tool and the timeline, but that people don't tend to notice unless they're you know, expert users of I2B2 web client. And we want to just highlight those because those are very powerful things that a lot of development effort has gone into over the last few years and um, want to make sure people know about them. And then uh, CSV table export. This is something that the, um, the ACT implementation team at Harvard has, has written already um, and that we used in our Pecora network as well too. Uh, that allows you to develop these custom exports of, from I2B2 into a CSV file where the columns are in a format where you could put them into like a, an R script or a machine learning algorithm where uh, rather than the raw data from the fact table, it's, it's arranged in a way that is based on the data you want to analyze, like uh, the first date of diabetes or the total number of encounters, for example. Um, and so that's going to be a powerful feature. And, um, and so we'll put that in. We're planning to put that actually in as a tab just to highlight its, uh, its importance, uh, it, but it, it'll be a web client plugin. Uh, okay, next slide. Uh, we're also revamping total num counting. Um, I'll spend a minute on this. So we're adding two new tables to the CRC, total num and total num report. Um, so we realized that part of the point of total nums uh, in, in the way we're thinking of it going forward is to look at changes in counts over various refreshes. So you would expect over time um, your data to increase. So you would expect the number of patients with diabetes to either stay the same or go up a little bit. You wouldn't expect it to go down. So you can start to think about various data quality checks you can do based on that information. But in order to capture that, <clears throat> we needed a table where we could put this um, the total nums over time. So every time you run the total num scripts, now it'll <clears throat> dump your counts into a total num table so you can then track that over time. And then there, it also generates a report table which obfuscates the total nums in the same way as Shrine so that you can uh, just export that. And in, in ACT right now, we're doing a pilot project where we're using that for some data analytics and um, 
I'm building a, uh, a dashboard that people can use. So that, that will be a community project at some point, that, the dashboard. It won't go in the core platform. But the uh, total num and total num report table will be there for, um, for use by the total num scripts for various you know, analytics and reporting. Um, we also are including the Cynthia data uh, that Mike talked about. And we are also um, improving the database, uh, the database and upgrade process. So we made a lot of improvements to the uh, the server install last time, and now we'll be tackling a little bit of making the database install easier. Um, okay, next slide. Uh, we're also working on these bundles. Again, this is this one is funded by the the Dell the Dell project that we're working on. So we're making um, a distributed query bundle uh, that includes a lot of the tools um, that can be used to build a shrine network like ACT. And then we're going to be building a, a bundle, a second bundle that will uh, involve uh, integration of Transmart and I2B2, or at least the ability to analyze your data with both platforms. So that is going to be coming out around the same time as 13 will. So we'll say it's part of 13. Okay, next slide. Um, but that, that isn't the end. As I said, we would love to have contributions from the community. And, um, and yeah, as I said, you can submit a GitHub pull request. You can contact us. We can work with you on developing features and helping you get the features you've already written into the, into the platform. This doesn't have to happen in 13. Again, it can happen in 14 and going forward. Um, we also would love help with documentation and uh, cleaning up the community project site. And um, also, also ideas uh, for going forward. Again, the complexity with with uh, actually implementing the ideas is if it's a big a big new feature, we'll need to uh, acquire either some help in developing it or some some additional funding. But uh, we we do want to uh, have the core platform move forward in the way that the community feels is best. Uh, we don't want to be the only people setting the direction on that. Um, in the future. Okay, next slide. And oh, this uh, this was uh, I left it in here from the community um, uh, meeting, uh, the Harvard meeting. Uh, this is what we're th something we're thinking of for Beyond Thirteen. Uh, we're thinking about this uh, this complex pipeline of data analytics. How you get from an I two B two query to um, to doing data analytics on it. And what seems to be working best in other initiatives is sites doing local analytics. So sharing analytics scripts, but having local sites run those analytics and then um, validating and kind of aggregating those results together. Um, and so working on methods to uh, do the, to share these local analytics and pool the results. Th this is kind of a, a broad, a broad idea that doesn't have a direct feature that we're working on right now, but um, that is something that we're we're thinking about, and that's certainly not the only thing that we can think about beyond thirteen. But that was the that was the highlight from the Harvard meeting. Okay, next slide. I think that might be the last slide, actually. Oh, this is all the people that have worked on I two B two. So this is uh, these are the people that. Um, led, led uh, were, were in leadership. And then the next slide is the people who uh, did a lot of the uh, coding. So next slide, Rudy. Yeah, so this is the people who did most of the, the coding. Um, okay, next slide. And actually that's probably back to you. So I noticed some comments in the chat. I don't know if, Rudy, if you want me to respond to those now or if you wanna field those and toss the ones to me that you want. Yeah, sure. There's a question about um, Open Clinica uh, in terms of doing an interface uh, similar to RedCap. Uh, has that been requested and any thought been given? Uh, oh, and then Diane responded, no. Um, yeah. I'm actually not familiar with Open Clinical. Um, it's Open Clinica, yeah. Open Clinica. Um, Open Clinical, oh, okay. Mike, are are you still on? Are you familiar with that? Hmm, okay. Well, I, I we have not I, looked. At, I am not. Okay. Okay. We haven't looked into that. Um, 
I'll I'll make a note of it and we can look into it. No no one else has has mentioned that previously. So if that's okay. something that is something to look at. Yep. Yeah, it's something to look at. If it's something that's widely used, we should definitely consider that. Um, okay. okay, so at this point, I think we can open up any questions that uh, anyone has. Keith had a comment about a, a French uh, language version of the web client. Um, right. Jeff, maybe I know that the web client is, you know, is is really a, a topic that we um, that we care a lot about. Um, I don't know if if, if uh, taking uh, the current web client and um, converting that to French would be would make sense at this point, or maybe you know the next iteration of of web client. Yeah, I, I mean, I think the, I mean it, it'll be difficult to replace the whole web client. Um, so I think the web client we have in some form will live for quite a while. Um, and so having some kind of language localization would be great. I don't, I don't know that we want to maintain both a French version and an English version. But if there's a way, if the the partner that has written this code has made a way to maintain localization separately from the, the source code, that would be really cool and definitely would be interested in getting that in. Um, yeah, I think the question was, you know, customers, you know, users in Canada, you know, especially, um, you know, Eastern uh, Canada, I guess, is really essential that uh, legally required that they have both a French language version and an English language version of applications and uh, someone has actually done a, a localized version of, um, of ITB2 web client. And so the question was, is that something, would that be the sort of thing that could be done, you know, would be interesting as a uh, uh, contribution back to the foundation? Uh, okay, um, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing the chat. You see it um, there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it, it sounds, it, so it says it's hard coded, not localization based. Right. Um, I mean that still it's still interesting because uh, because of that that requirement to have the French support. I wonder if we could right. put it in in such a way where it wouldn't be too difficult to maintain it. But but as uh, Griffin pointed out in the chat, the the old web client has a lot of complexity to it, and putting it in um, a newer a newer tool would be easier. It, it wouldn't. I mean, that would that would if that would not allow if that would prevent people in Canada from using the the yeah. full web client. That there's still a good reason to consider it. So I'd be interested exactly. in mm -hmm. I'd be interested in seeing the code and see how seeing how it was done. But to do a full a full like you know localization support, I'm and I'm now agreeing with Griffin and Diane that we need to we need to make sure that's in whatever new tools we write that. Are based on the ITB2 API, but the full um, original web client. I think we'll, we'll we would we would I would definitely look at what what Keith's folks have done because that would be yeah. very interesting. I think it's, it's certainly a good it's certainly an important question and something that we should look at. Okay, yeah. any other questions anyone wants to bring? Hi, this is Mark Abajian from USC in Los Angeles. Yes. Um, uh, as as long as we're discussing here, thank you very much, uh, Jeff. The um, the roadmap for I two B two and what could be possibly available in version thirteen. I just wanted to um, make sure that um, the uh, I wanted to let you know that there's a number of sites in the ACT community that are interested in adding authentication method for SAML, specifically for things like Shibboleth. And so there's a discussion going on in the, uh, in the, among the ACT, uh, Mac, ACT uh, administrators. Um, and there's a number of sites that have done something locally. But I don't think anything's been contributed back to, to ACT to make that a, uh, final decision and so we realize that that's something where um, maybe there is something that could be done if something could be done for version 13 we think that would be great thank you okay great um I, yeah since you're on i 
I had a couple questions. I, I was curious. I mean, more authentication methods are a great thing for I2B2. We have to be a little careful putting that in the core platform because we don't want to create security holes where people can then hack in. Um, so that kind of raises the bar for testing uh, a little bit higher than doing something like improving the fine terms interface. Um, but I, I think it's an important thing to consider. But I was curious, since you are kind of representing the SAML group, um, how is it uh, preventing uh, people, as I've seen on the ACT list, that it's preventing people from using I2B2? Um, uh, it's preventing people from upgrading their I2B2 because the people who have implemented this have gone in and made code changes to their I2B2 to allow the SAML authentication. Mm -hmm. And then it's a, I think it's, that makes it a, uh, a major um, lift for them to go into a new version of I2B2 and then make those same changes. Oh, I see. Okay. And, and so the, I, I mean, maybe we should talk offline if this goes much longer. I don't want to waste everyone's time, but um, if, so with, with SAML, uh, the, there was a GitHub repository that one of the emails, I think it was your email pointed to, is that something that basically does what should be done in I2B2, but it needs to be modified to work with the newest version? Is that something that then we could, we could talk to the developers and, and talk about putting that into the core code and just modifying it to work with 12 or 13? Jeff, I wish I knew. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just, uh, I'm just, uh, you know, a uh, administrator for the USC site. And, uh -huh. um, and I have not worked on SAML myself, but I've kind of surveyed what's out there, just doing Google searches and listening to anecdotal stories from colleagues. And there are a couple of a um, couple of sites that have prepared something in I2B2 that would allow them to do SAML. Uh, as far as I know, no one has been able to get that to work in with Shrine yet. Hmm. Uh, haven't had any positive response from people who have been able to make that work with Shrine for some reason. And um, so that's the status of that. I don't really know details on, on that. I just know that there's a number of us that would be interested in pursuing this and making sure that it gets working. Interesting. Yeah, that, that is a good point that then that making there might be complexity in making it work with both I2B2 and Shrine. Maybe, yeah, maybe we should convene like a small meeting yeah. among SAML advocates and, and, and at least Mike and I and see, see how things sound. So that, that, that's good to hear there's interest in that. I'll see if we can pursue a, at least a discussion on that to see where we can go. Great. Thanks, Mark. <clears throat> Okay, great, um, everyone. Well, um, thank you for joining. Um, and Rudy, keep this up so we get all of the SAML folks. I'll also reach out to um, the the ACT um, folks to make sure that we're we're collecting all of the people that are interested in in SAML. So we when we have sure. that meeting. Um, but I I want to I want to thank everyone. One, um, I hope that uh, your summer is um, is good, and we will talk to you all uh, next month. <laughs>